So, in the just ended video, we looked at the issue in relation to classification of costs according to nature, and I gave you various scenarios. Now, when it comes to expenses also, we have what we call direct expenses and indirect expenses. Usually, direct expenses are the expenses that are incurred which can be traced to the products. For instance, if we hire the service of a specialist to check the quality, the quality of our furniture, how much money we are paying to that specialist becomes what? A direct expenses, all right? And can be traced. Or if we use a specific device, okay, a specific device on molding the furniture and then finishing up the furniture to make it a quality product, then how much money we are incurring on the hiring of that particular furniture uh, equipment becomes a direct expenses. So all other expenses like electricity, like fuel, like other things becomes indirect expenses. So that is what we mean by classification of course according to nature. So let's come to the second one. Classification of course according to function. What do we mean? This is where cost is classified according to the various activities that are undertaken within the organization. In other words, classification of cost according to function is where cost is classified according to the various departments in the organization. So under classification of cost according to function, we're going to have something like factory or production cost. It could be factory or production overheads. Then we will have finance cost or finance overheads. We will have selling and distribution overheads. We will have administration overhead. It means that we are classifying the cost according to the various departments in the organization, according to the various activities in the organization, according to the various functions of the organization. So that is what we mean by classification of cost according to function. Then the third one, which is a very key aspect of uh, financial or management accounting, is classification of cost according to behavior. Right? Classification of cost according to behavior. Now, when we say classification of cost according to behavior, this is where cost is classified according to how the cost reacts with output level or according to how the cost varies with output level. So it is about the variability of the cost according to the output level. So classification of cost according to behavior, the first thing has to do with what? Fixed cost. So what are fixed cost? Fixed cost are cost that remains the same irrespective of what? The output level. So for instance, if you start a business, you will be beginning to incur what? Fixed cost. So fixed cost starts even when output is what? Zero. So when you start a business, the office you're going to be renting, the equipment you'll be buying for your business, and whatever you'll be buying, even though you've not started, even though you've not started receiving clients or serving clients, you realize that those first things that you have to put there before your business runs becomes what? The first cost. So first cost remains the same irrespective of the output level. This is very important because when you are doing absorption costing, marginal costing and activity-based costing. There, you are going to be dealing with this thing, especially when you're absorbing fixed overheads. It is going to be the same. The same idea is going to be carried forward when you are doing uh, standard costing and various analysis. So it is very important you understand that fixed cost remains the same irrespective of what? The output level. So that when we are doing various analysis, when we are talking about fixed cost, we won't look at it in relation to the actual output that has been produced. If we are absorbing fixed overheads, there are fixed overheads that we will, we will be taking and adding it to the prime cost would not be the fixed cost based on the actual unit, but will be the fixed cost based on the budgeted unit. And we will get into that later on under profit statement. Then we come to variable cost. So what are variable cost? Variable costs are costs that vary with what? The output level. Okay? So meaning that it is when you begin production before you begin to incur what? Variable cost. So costs such as material cost is a variable cost. Labor cost is a variable cost. Right? So all those things become towards the issue about variable cost. But 
some labor costs can be fixed cost, all right? Some labor costs can be fixed. For instance, if the managing director of a company is supposed to take an annual salary of 100,000 US dollars, that is a fixed cost. Meaning, whether the company makes profit or not, he is going to be taking $100,000. Meaning, if the company, whatever happens, that is the fixed cost. So, labor cost can be subclassified into the fixed and then the variable components. So, that is the idea about variable cost. Generally, it varies with the output level. The more you produce, the more cost you incur. The less you produce, the less cost you incur. Then the third thing is about semi-fixed cost, which it can also be called semi-variable cost. Now, these are costs that are partly fixed and also variable at the same time. So that is also another thing that we can talk about in behavior. Then the fourth thing is about step cost. Step cost. So a step cost is a cost which is fixed in nature, but only within certain levels of activity. That is a step cost. So, a step cost is a cost which is fixed in nature, but only within what? A certain level of activity. So, how does a step cost come in? For instance, if a company produces from 0 to 100,000 units and incurs an electricity bill of, or an electricity expenses of $120,000, meaning as far as you are producing to, from 0 to 10,000 units, you'll be incurring $100,000. But then, anytime you incur more than 100,000, so any units produced after 100,000, we will incur an, ex, an electricity expenses cost of say, $5 per unit. Then, after that 10,000, any cost we are going to be incurring there becomes what? The step cost. So, when we are determining the total cost of the company, when we are determining the total cost of the Product. So, for instance, with my illustration, as far as you are producing zero to ten thousand, you will be incurring a cost of one hundred and twenty thousand dollars. Any units produced after ten thousand units, you will incur a cost of five dollars per unit. So, if the examiner then asks us, what is the cost of producing twelve thousand units? What is the cost of producing twelve thousand units? So, first. You must determine the first item. From, from 0 to 10,000, we will incur a cost of $120,000. Then now, we have produced 12,000. So the 10,000 from the 12, we will be left with 2,000. So each unit after the 10,000, we will incur a cost of $5 per unit. So the 5 by the 2 is going to be 10,000. Then we will add that 10,000 to the uh, 120,000, giving us 130,000 as the total cost incurred in production or in producing 12,000 units. I hope that is clear. So that is how step cost comes in. Now, it is classification of cost according to behavior that the concept of high and low comes to be, right? That the concept of high and low. You remember the high and low method? Maximum total cost minus minimum total cost divided by maximum output minus minimum output. Then we use that to get a variable cost per unit. Once we get a variable cost per unit, we can use the maximum or the minimum output in order to determine the first cost. Then we will use that to calculate whatever total cost that examiner wants us to calculate. And we'll get into that. I'll touch on that in another video. So that is what we mean when we talk about classification of cost according to behavior, right? I hope that is clear. So I'll see you in the video, in the next video rather, as we talk about production and non-production.